breaking news, Apple has just acquired Adobe's biggest competitor called Pixelmator, and this is really good for us designers because it creates a competitive landscape. So I did something kind of stupid, the dumbest thing I've ever done in my YouTube career. I reformatted my memory card. So I've actually already tested Pixelmator, and I'm gonna let you guys watch the video of that session because it was my first time using it ever on camera. So you guys get my raw reaction. You guys are in for a treat. It Wow. I'm, I, I'm not even going to say anymore. You know what? Let's start the video. This is good for the for, for Adobe because it's going to push them to work harder as a company. Adobe already has competition. I'm on Google right now and I just typed in Photoshop like software. Let's go through the list of competition. We have GIMP, Photo P, Affinity Photo by Affinity Serif, and they were acquired by Canva. We have Canva. Now, I wouldn't say some of these should be on the list, though, to be honest with you. Some of them are more of like a dedicated, like almost like a Lightroom uh, competitor more than a Photoshop competitor. But I would say the biggest players on this list are Canva. We have GIMP. And then I would say Photo P, yeah, Affinity Photo for sure. And now we have Pixelmator. So Pixelmator has been a thing since 2007, September 25th, 2007. And it's important to note that there is not a subscription model like Adobe. Like, so you could just, you know, buy the app one time purchase and you own it for life, which is really cool. Photoshop, let's say you just want Photoshop, right? I think you have to pay $10 a month to use Photoshop. That brings us to Pixelmator. No, a lot of blabbering going on. Sorry, guys, but uh, Pixelmator Pro. Okay. So, a new home for Pixelmator. This is their official website. So November 1st, this article was posted. It's crazy what a small group of dedicated people have been able to achieve over the years. And they're from Lithuania. That's insane. Now we'll have the ability to reach an even wider audience. I totally agree with that and make an even bigger impact on the lives of creative people around the world. There'll be no material. So they're not going to make any changes to Pixelmator Pro, Pixelmator for iOS and Photomator apps at this time. Stay tuned for exciting updates to come. I really hope that Apple acquiring Pixelmator does not make them switch to a subscription model. Please, for the love of God, don't do it. I guess I didn't install it. Let me install it. <laughs> I've waited to use Pixelmator Pro because I wanted you guys to see my honest opinion about it. So let's go ahead and open up a new document. I guess this one's fine. All right, we have our layers on the left hand side, which is interesting. I'm used to it being on the right. Can we move these panels? Okay, we can make that cool. All right, Photoshop's not that easy to do that. Like you could still change the, the icon sizes, but I love that. That is really cool. Blending options, position, that's nice. Show layer description, that's kind of cool. So this is a group. Now, if I want to click these, can I do Command G? I can, okay, and it's super smooth, man. All right, how do I throw this shit away if I don't like it? Do I just hit delete? Okay, that works. We can right click, delete, okay. Okay, we got grain layers so we have a bunch of grain hill what is that okay that's the hill layer and we have grain on top of everything i'm assuming where is that grain coming from there's grain on top but i don't know where the hell it's at let me zoom in can i do this oh i can let's go ahead and delete everything and start from scratch i just want to create like maybe some text or something and type something out so okay that's a paint bucket and then that's our arrow. Okay, let's delete this. How do I just delete this? Come on. Oh, it's because it's the last layer. Interesting. Okay, let's create a new layer. Can we just fill this with any color? Maybe I take the paint bucket tool. There we go. Okay, so we can fill the background with any color. There we go. So we have the BG color. Let's rename this BG. I'm getting the hang of it. We'll delete that layer. So it didn't like that I was gonna delete all the layers. It wants to have at least one layer, understandable. And we can actually lock that layer and then we'll create a new layer. Is there like a shortcut for that? I wonder, okay, I don't know the shortcuts yet, but it's okay. We'll create that layer with the plus icon. Can we press T on our keyboard to go to the top? Okay, you can do that. Let's type out, um, I never know what to type out. Let's go create. I want to try importing this logo and then doing something with it in the program because I want to see how easy it is to like manipulate things real quick. So let's just do this. We'll start with the logo. And just like that, I was able to do command I invert it, which is great. And it didn't, it's interesting. It didn't apply anything. And what if I want to like add texture to it? How do we do that? That is so cool. There's like these color filters. So there's different things like you can go vintage. And I, I don't think it will add anything to it, but that's really cool that you can do that. So there's like these color filters. 
And then this looks like there are effects, which, what does that do? Photographic, Mandela, Cosmic, Chroma? What does that do? Interesting. That's so cool. So that's how we can apply these effects. I can see this being really powerful. We're going to be using that, guaranteed. Wish you can, like, see what it says, though. Okay, this is texture. Wait a minute. Oh, this is CMYK halftone. What the hell? So we can add halftones. And you can do angles, noise. We can drag that above. So it's like your own layer palette for effects. So we have dot screen, line screen. We don't need the line screen. Let me zoom in on this, see what we're looking at. Interesting. So we'll make like a little design. Why not? So I need to get used to my keyboard shortcut. So V will resize or go to the, the pointer. Or what is this called? Selection tool. There we go. So now let's apply that same effect and see what it does. Because I, I, I really want to experiment with that halftone. Let's go. Where is it at? Artistic. Is that the halftone? I sharpened it on purpose so we can kind of see what it's doing. There's a lot of unknowns right now, obviously, because we're getting used to this. But I like that it's not like a smart filter, right? Like the layer is technically rasterized, but it's applying the effects on the right hand side here. So it's almost like the effects have its has its own layers palette in a, or panel if in a way. So that's kind of cool. Um, we'll hide this. Now, can we see the effects on? Yeah, see, the, this is just for the layers. It's weird. Um, you could do layer masking. Um, Okay, so you can add the effects directly above, which is interesting. But I don't like that I don't see the name of the of the effect. So we applied the effect directly to the photo, but we can also stack the effect on top of everything. Now, can we create a clipping mask is the question. You can. Wow. So I just clipped that effect only to that photo. Dude, we're learning a lot already. This is cool. So if I left click on the thumbnail twice or just the layer twice, it brings it up. So now we have this. Um, what is this line thing? So I don't want the line screen, get rid of that. I really just want this halftone pattern. I want to figure out how to use it though. I could just see this being really powerful. Maybe we can try to add just a simple noise adjustment above everything and do like a threshold effect just to see if it works. But I also have to kind of figure out how to do that. I'm going to assume that the noise adjustment somewhere over here on the right side. Okay, so I added grain through a color adjustment layer, then I have effects. So I have my color adjustment right here, which is kind of nice because we can add the grain with the intensity all in one layer. And then we can also like take the shadows and raise them a little bit all in one layer. That's actually really cool, to be honest. Like that's important to be able to do that and make it less contrasty. Okay, cool. So now the, the whole thing is, can we apply a threshold effect on top of this? That's kind of what I'm more curious about. So like, is this the threshold? No, that's a gradient fill. That's a sharpen effect. See my, okay, that's interesting. So that's artistic. What does this do? Okay, halftone. Wow, so we have the dot screen. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold the front door. Let's add this. This is insane, guys. I mean, I'm honestly impressed because they, they really do make it super easy to kind of see what you're doing. You just have to find out where everything is. But like, see these... These line halftones are really nice. I don't know if we're gonna be able to like do like the same thing that we do in Photoshop, obviously, because we make some crazy shit in Photoshop. Okay, so I'm starting to find out that there's different sections. So we have grain, noise, posterize, that's cool. So it has a posterize, see, this is insane. Everything that I'm finding in Photoshop, I'm finding in Pixelmator. So I'm not gonna lie, like if, you, if you're on a budget, this might be a good option, like so far. Oh my God, it's so clean too, so much detail. Let's go back. I don't need that add effect. I want a threshold effect. That's what I'm really looking forward to. Oh, we could type it in. There's a threshold. Oh my God, guys. And you know what? We can stack that grain on top too. So we could do something like this. Wait a minute. Wait, can we drag that? We can. Bro. Photoshop, watch out. We don't need this. So now if we wanted to, we can add that effect like that, or we can click on the actual layer, the photo, and then change the, the shadows and everything in real time. I'm impressed. I, I, I mean, I really am. Um, can we blur this though? 
let's uh, see if we can add a, an effect to this actual photo. So we'll go here and we'll just blur it. Yep, so we can add a Gaussian blur. That's crazy, guys. So now I'm kind of curious. So let's try to like texture this logo up. Now that I know what I know, <laughs> let's let's add some cool effects to this and see what we can come up with. We don't need this, so we're going to get rid of that. We don't need this. We don't need that. We can add another effect and let's try to go to a distortion effect and but we also want to add that blur effect. So let's go blur. Um, we can do motion blur. Are we able to change the blend mode on it? Those the question. So maybe we do have to stack the effects on top of the logo, not on the logo itself. We'll go here, empty layer, and we'll convert the layer. OK, so you can convert it to add the effects. So we go add effects. We'll add the Gaussian blur. So that works and that affects whatever is below it. And I'm sure we can probably clip it. Let's try. We can easy and we'll go here. We'll add the grain. Try that out. So we got the grain. It's clearly working. Intensity is working. Blur we could take down. Or maybe noise, actually. Let's add noise instead of grain. Noise. Bam. All right, cool. Monochromatic easy. So, yeah, we're going to get rid of this grain layer. We don't need that. Um, can put the Gaussian blur above the noise and then obviously we need to add that threshold. There we go. So the blur threshold should affect the blur, but it's not interesting. So I'm wondering if we have to apply that on a separate layer, huh? Or just not clip it. Okay. Yeah, it works. You just don't want to clip it. Holy crap. This is so smooth too. It really is, man. Let's take the noise above. Okay, that works cool. The noise kind of helps, but I'm like wondering if it needs to be above, and I think it does. Yeah, there we go. All right, I just found a texture, and what I'm gonna do is create a new layer. Actually, just paste it, and it worked just like that. And then we can invert it. And now let's just try to change the blend mode of that layer and see what that looks like. Okay, all right, I like it. And we can move it around seamlessly. Damn, dude. Maybe let's duplicate it again. Command J, does that work? It does, let's invert it. And we'll change the blend mode to screen. This is too good. I, I just, I, I really am speechless, guys, because this is so seamless. Like it's, it just works so good. Now I can mess with the levels of the texture that's on top. Like I wanna own this, I'm gonna buy it. Let's see what it costs. Pixelmator Pro, how much is it? 50 bucks. It's only $50 and you own it. You own it for life. It has 16,000 ratings. I mean, what do I need to, I don't even need to say anything. This video turned out way different than I expected. The The fact that I was able to get this, these kind of results within minutes of using this software, never opened it before. And I was able to do this in the software. And I'll be honest with you guys, I use Affinity Photo, okay? And I was trying to do this kind of stuff too very complicated that's just my opinion i i could not figure out how to do certain things and it was frustrating i don't feel frustrated using this and i just started using it on camera in front of you guys right now no brainer apple if you're watching this which you probably will never see this but please do not ruin pixelmator pro it's amazing so much promise and i only used it for a short amount of time but i can tell you right now i am definitely going to keep using it um are you guys blown away like I am? Let me know in the comments, please, because I really want to know. I know there's people that love negativity, so I'll give you one thing that I wish it was different about it. I wish that I didn't have to bounce from left to right on the screen. I don't understand how there's like layers on this side and layers on this side. I wish it was all in one panel. It would be much easier to manage, but it's not a big deal, and, I, and I'm starting to get used to it already. I wish I didn't reformat my memory card so you guys can see my actual face when I was reacting to Pixelmator because I was genuinely shocked. I had to call my wife into the room to show her what we created today because I was genuinely blown away by the, the user interface. It was so easy to find things. You know, even when I was a little confused, I was able to like find what I was looking for fairly quickly. Um, whereas when I used Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer, I was actually confused for one time I was confused for an entire hour trying to find out where threshold was, how to stack layers. It was very complicated. You know, Photoshop gets a lot of crap for being complicated, but the truth is it's actually not that complicated. It's really simple. All the tools are right in front of you. Um, I think Pixelmator is onto something here and I hope Adobe or I hope Apple, sorry, not Adobe, 
I hope they don't ruin Pixelmator because it's really that good, guys. And for $50 a month, it's a no-brainer. Like, guys, go get it. If you don't have Photoshop and you don't pay for Photoshop, maybe you have a, you know what I'm saying, you have that version of it, right? Go get it. Go get Pixelmator, guys. It, use it. I mean, I'm probably going to make tutorials on it. It's that fun to use. Anyway, I just dropped some new products on my website. Shameless plug. I have Auto Thresh and Style Forge. You can pick them up right now at charliepangus.com. I want to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments. Leave a comment. Let's talk. Um, also, if you do end up using it, also give me your thoughts after a few weeks of using it, maybe. I would love to hear your guys' opinion on it. Um, and are you guys looking forward to the future? Is Apple acquiring Pixelmator a good thing or a bad thing? Let's chat. I'll see you guys in the next video.